Hey everyone, welcome back to another handheld news recap. We have a number of things to cover today, including the Techno Pocket Go release, new graphics drivers for AMD and Intel. We had some software updates across the board with updates to Armory Crate, Legion Space, MSI Center M, and a massive SteamOS update. INEO teases the INEO 3 as well as unveils the price of their upcoming eGPU. We'll also take a look at the Anbernic RG40XXH, some accessories for your Legion Go and ROG Ally, and a pretty decent controller from GameSir. And now that you've got the plan, let's dive into it. Before we get started, I'm trying a new format for the recap where I'm going to be merging in the 1X Player, AOK Zoe, INEO, and GPD section all into the quick news. So let me know what you guys think of this change, whether you like it or whether you think it should go back to the way it was. First up is the Techno Pocket Go. I've covered this in previous news recaps. I've also done a comprehensive, fairly in-depth testing review on this, so check that one out if you haven't yet. And if you're interested in this device, the Kickstarter has now gone live, and one piece of news that I hadn't covered in my review is that they're also going to be selling just the device. You don't have to buy the AR glasses with it. And that comes at a new lower cost of $539 for the base model. It's definitely a unique device that I would say is worth at least taking a look at. Next, we had a teaser trailer from INEO for the new INEO 3. Unfortunately, we didn't learn anything about the device. We don't know the specs, launch date, or even when to expect more information. All we can really do right now is speculate on what the device might be, what the specs are going to be, which is something that I know us handheld gamers are pros at. We're always trying to guess what's coming next. So tell me what your thoughts are. What APU do you think they're going to go with? Do you think they're going to include OLED? Let's talk about it in the comments. And also from INEO, we got the information for that Starship graphics dock, the one that has basically their eGPU that has the AMD 7600 MXT. This is a product that they talked about quite some time ago, and we've heard really nothing until now. So I would definitely recommend checking this out if you're in the market for an external graphics card. At $599, it is the cheapest $7600 you're going to get right now. And probably the one that I would compare it closest to is the original 1X Player 1X GPU, because I believe this one also has an SSD slot. Next up, we have the new driver updates for Intel and AMD. Looking at the Intel side first, we have the new 6129 drivers that bring support for Call of Duty Black Ops 6, as well as some game performance improvement for Diablo 4. Then taking a look at the AMD side, we have the 24.10.1, which adds support for Unknown 9 Awakening and Call of Duty Black Ops 6, 7 Days to Die, and Once Human. There was also fixed issues and improvements, as well as a list of the known issues. Check out the video description if you'd like to visit that link for more information. If you've used your Legion Go in the last week or so, you've probably seen an update come to Legion Space that's 1.1.3.3. And with it, there was no release notes or anything, so you might have updated and wondered what did it actually do? Well, I've checked into it and I found a couple of things. There might be other things, but this is what I was able to find. So the first thing that you'll have noticed is that during the update phase, it updated your controllers with some new firmware. And what that actually did is there's a couple of things. The first one is that it added an option for gyro controls. So now if you go into your controller settings, you'll see that you can adjust the gyro, you can adjust the sensitivity, the dead zone, you can reverse it, and you can also choose whether you want it to be your left stick or your right stick. I haven't really had a chance to test this out personally, but from what I've read online from others that have, it seems to work fairly well, so give it a test and let me know what you think. The other fix apparently is also for the controllers. There was this weird bug that sometimes the controllers would just vibrate constantly if they would reconnect in a certain manner. I think it was if they were disconnected from the console. I can't remember the specific trigger, but I do remember having it happen to me before. And from what I've read online, it seems that others have noticed that that seems to fix that issue. So there may have been other changes, but I'm not sure what they would be right now. If you've noticed anything else, uh, let me know in the comments. And also just a side note, like Legion Space has made leaps and bounds from when it first came out. I just figured I'd take a moment to kind of appreciate that. It looks a lot better and seems to have a lot more functionality. Next, I wanted to show you an accessory that JSOC sent out. This is for your Legion Go to connect your controllers together. Once we take a look at what we get in the box, you get your instruction manuals and then a few accessories. So we have this uh, FPS mode puck here that uh, I'll show you why we have that. There's a reason why they included it. The next accessory is a silicone grip cover for the controllers. I'll show this on the controllers later, basically just makes them a little bit grippier. 
And now the main accessory that's included here is actually the controller connectors. So these are magnetic, they attach together so they basically become one unit. And what you do is you just need to connect your controllers onto these, so you just click them on. And once you've attached both the left and the right controller, you can click them together and they'll magnetically be held in place. Now you can put on the silicone cover which has some nice grips on the back. Now I'll show you why we have this extra attachment for FPS mode. The reason they included this is that you don't have to take off the connector when you're using FPS mode. You can just slot it in and it'll fit even with the connector attached. If you use your Legion Go connected to the TV, I definitely recommend checking this out. It makes it a lot more comfortable to use the controller. If you're looking to purchase, check out the link in the video description. Just like we had updates to Legion Space and the Legion Go, we also had updates to Armory Crate for the Ally and Ally X. The update was mostly focused on bug fixes. We had the occasional crashes that were fixed for the Command Center. Enhanced responsiveness when switching controller mode in the command center, as well as an issue that was resolved where the embedded controller was occasionally not showing up as an option once again in the command center. And there was also an issue where the lighting settings would occasionally disappear on the lighting page, so that's now been resolved as well. For some enhancements, they've improved the startup speed, they've added an option to toggle off the startup animation, as well they brought improvements to the joystick calibration process. And specifically on the 2023 Ally, we had the Realtek driver update that fixed an issue that had inconsistent volume when recording. We've also heard from ASUS that sometime in the near future they're planning to do a GPU driver update that they plan to include the AFMF2 features. I'm not sure exactly when that's coming, but apparently it is going to be coming soon. The second thing that I wanted to show you is actually a new case for your ROG Ally X from Handheld DIY. If you're like me, where you're coming from the Ally to the Ally X, you'll find that most of your cases don't actually fit anymore. So when Handheld DIY reached out to see if I wanted to check out their case, I was more than happy because I don't actually have a case for my Ally X. On the inside, it has a really soft material that you don't have to worry about your device getting scuffed up. I've actually had that happen to my Odin 2 when I was using the case from there, so it does happen. When you put the device in, it fits in fairly well. There's a little bit of movement there, but not enough that I would actually worry that it's going to move inside the case because there is a cushion that lays across the screen. When you have the case closed, I don't feel the device moving around at all. The case itself is a hard shell case that has a handle in the corner, and if you take a look at the back, you can see that there's a mesh here. This would be a good spot to store any kind of charging cords or maybe even a charging block. Overall, as far as hard shell cases go, this is a solid option. Check the link in the description if you'd like to pick one up. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Anbernic RG40XXH, and this is coming from 2Retro, who sent the device over for me to test out. I've tested out a few of these retro handheld devices, and I gotta say, I've seen in the short amount of time that I've played with them, quite a bit of progress from Anbernic. Although this device plays many of the same games and systems as some of the other smaller, uh, I, I would call them entry level retro handhelds, I find that the experience of actually playing on it has improved. The D-pad on this device feels really nice, like I found when I was playing side scrollers that I had no issues with it, I wasn't getting any kind of false inputs or you know some of the typical issues that you get when you get a bad D-pad. And it also seems like they've paid a little bit of extra attention to the joysticks. I find that they feel a little bit better to use, a little bit smoother when you're spinning them around. And of course adding the RGB ring around them is just a nice touch. I'm kind of a sucker for RGB. I know some people aren't, but I like it. As far as the controllers go, we have the same face buttons as a Nintendo controller, we have our bumpers and triggers at the top, we have our volume, as well as a mini HDMI. It's always kind of nice to have that feature so you can connect to a monitor or TV. And at the bottom we have two micro SD slots so you can have two different libraries of games for storage so you don't run out anytime soon. Overall, I really like the look and feel of this little handheld. If you're looking for an entry level retro device, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. If you're interested in picking this device up, check out 2Retro's website. They have a number of retro handhelds that you can check out, and maybe you'll find either this one or another one that maybe suits your needs better. Right now they have a Halloween sale on, so make sure to check out the code that's on their website so you can get, I think it's like 12% off, and then check the video description. There's also an additional 10% that you can get off. I believe you can use both codes. I could be wrong on that. I have not tested that. And thanks again to 2Retro for sending this device for me to test out for everyone. And the last product to take a look at is a controller from GameSir called the G7HE. 
The G7HE is a wired controller, it's compatible with PC and Xbox, and as you can see in the design, it looks pretty much identical to an Xbox Series controller. Although the controller feels almost identical to an Xbox controller, you do get Hall Effect joysticks, so you don't need to worry about controller drift. The bumpers and triggers feel like an Xbox controller, and the D-pad feels pretty nice. At the bottom we have a headphone jack and a button for the microphone. One area that's improved over the series controllers is the textured rubber grip at the back. It feels very nice, kind of reminds me of the Xbox Elite controller. With the prices of the Xbox series controllers, it's definitely good to have options like this that you can turn to if you're looking to get a spare controller or even replace one that maybe is starting to get some drift. So if you're looking for a replacement controller or even a spare that you don't mind being wired, then this is definitely a good option to consider. It's fairly affordable and definitely feels high quality. If you're looking to pick up one of these today, check out the video description. I'm going to leave some coupon codes for different countries, so there'll be a big list of them. Make sure to pick the appropriate country, and you'll get an additional 10% off your purchase. A special thank you to GameSir for providing this unit for me to test out and show for you guys. Sticking with the theme of software updates, we actually had a pretty major one come to SteamOS, and this is to the Stable channel. There's a pretty massive list of changes, but probably the biggest highlights is that we're getting, a, I think it's a new GPU driver. As well, apparently it's supposed to be more battery efficient. So it seems like they've done some major changes in the background here. I think they had changed uh, something to do with SteamOS and what version of Linux it's using. And it seems like there's going to be more updates coming. This is something that should make it a little bit more efficient from what they're saying. Overall, it sounds like a pretty positive change. So yeah, big news for the Steam Deck this week. Honestly, I gotta hand it to Valve. They've kept updating this Steam Deck for so long and it just seems to get better and better and better as time goes on. So it's pretty encouraging to see how dedicated they are to making this the best experience that they can. Which also makes me excited for whenever they decide to release a Steam Deck 2. I'm really curious when that's going to be and what we can expect. For the claw, we had an update to the Intel drivers, which we went through in the quick news. So that obviously had an impact on the claw. Aside from that, we also got, again, following the theme, a software update. And just like the Legion Go, we've now got gyro that's been added into the software. When you go to your controller settings, and specifically the gamepad mode, you'll see now that there's a gyro menu that's at the bottom. Here you can adjust the accuracy, dead zone, and also where it's going to be enabled, whether it's the left stick, the right stick, or the mouse. I did try setting it to mouse mode, and unfortunately there seems to be a bit of an issue right now, at least for the mouse mode. I'm not sure if that same issue translates over to the joysticks, but I'll show you in a second. When you go to the desktop, you'll notice that the mouse actually scrolls down on its own. I've slowed this clip down dramatically so you can see it, but the mouse seems to go from top to bottom. If you go back into the menu and go back to desktop, it just does the same thing. I've tried adjusting the settings and nothing seems to fix it. So I'm guessing we're going to see another firmware update to hopefully address this, but I tried rebooting, I tried updating the BIOS, uh, nothing seems to fix this. Either way, I look at this as a positive because it means that they are looking to implement it, it's just probably needing a little bit more work. And that's it for this handheld recap. Let me know what you think of this new format where I've taken a bunch of sections and just merged them into the quick news. I think it's going to save some time and make the video a little bit more condensed for everyone. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.